out of the Middle East, uh, trying to give Arab nationalists who wanted freedom for 20 odd years finally the, their independence. Um, we're looking now at um, what, what we're calling the Arab Spring, and Syria in particular, former French colony, former, former French uh, mandate, is, is at the centre of that. Um, are there lessons, do you think, that contemporary Western states can draw in the way they deal with the, the, the Middle East from what happened with Britain and France in the interwar years? I think the, the major lesson to be learned is, is one of how deeply do you get involved in the internal politics of, of these countries. Uh, they all now have very strong um, nationalist movements, they're, they're proudly independent places, and there's a real danger now in trying to help say the Arab Spring on its way, uh, that, that if we give too much um, help to, to, to people seeking freedom, that we actually um, reduce their chances of getting it. Because we're seen to be the, the hidden hand behind, behind the, the protest movements. And if you look um, at what happened in the past, if you read the book, you can see there's a long legacy of us um, being deeply involved in that part of the world and not to everyone's benefit. And is there, do you think, anything positive about the French and British legacy in the Middle East? I don't think there really is a, a huge amount. Um, you have to see this is the sort of last gasp of empire. These two powers divided up this part of the world at a point in time when empire was already becoming unpopular, and they did so despite uh, public pressure not to do, not to do that. Um, so so they, they sort of pressed on anyway, and, um, and the result, in a way, was something that could have been foreseen. The Americans said... Well, President Wilson, Woodrow Wilson's advisor, said uh, they were going to make a terrible mess in this part of the world, and he was absolutely right. They did. James Barr, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thirty American soldiers are killed in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. It's the biggest single loss of life of U.S. personnel since war, the war began there. Many were special forces. President Obama said their deaths were a reminder of the extraordinary sacrifices made by the military. China, America's biggest creditor, strongly criticizes the country after the U.S. loses its AAA status for the first time. Tributes are paid to the schoolboy killed by a polar bear in Norway. His family say he was strong, fearless and kind. And England do just enough to beat Wales in a World Cup warm-up at Twickenham. Hello and good evening. 30 American soldiers, seven Afghan troops and a civilian interpreter have been killed in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. Many of them were US Navy SEALs from the Special Forces Unit which killed Osama bin Laden in May. It's America's biggest single loss of life since the war began nearly a decade ago. President Obama paid tribute to the victims and said their deaths were a reminder of the extraordinary sacrifices made by the military. From Washington, Andrew North sent this report. First light after America's worst day in Afghanistan. A twin-rotored Chinook over the crash site in the mountains near Kabul. 
The American Special Forces and Afghan commandos who died were on the same kind of helicopter. Flying low, they were hit by Taliban rocket fire. An eyewitness saw what happened. We were outside our rooms on a veranda and saw this helicopter flying very low. It was hit by a rocket and it was on fire. It started coming down and crashed just yards away from our house, close to the river. Most of those on board were from the elite US Navy SEALs, the BBC has been told, seen here in training. Not the same troops, but the same unit that killed Osama bin Laden three months ago. This was how President Obama first got the news in a photo released by the White House, the moment every president dreads. In a statement, he said their deaths are a reminder of the extraordinary sacrifices made by the US military in Afghanistan. He also paid tribute to the seven Afghan troops who were killed in the same crash. It couldn't come at a worse time as US troops begin to come home, with many predicting this could allow the Taliban to regroup.